the heart's pumping walls are made of an extraordinary kind of muscle cell. Seen through the microscope, individual heart cells are always twitching, each to its own rhythm. But as soon as two heart cells touch, they start to beat as one, choreographed by minute electrical currents. A scan of the heart's electrical systems shows currents sweeping across the muscles. They're coordinated by a bundle of nerve cells known as the pacemaker. The pacemaker coordinates the heartbeat. It also listens for messages from other parts of the body, stepping up or slowing down the heart's blood output on request. Muscles demand more blood when they're busy, but strong emotions also stir the heart. Love and fear can both get the heart pounding. This busy organ may look fearsomely complex, but it has a simple blueprint. Valves divide the heart into four hollow chambers. They work in pairs to form two separate pumps. One pump forces oxygen-depleted blood to the lungs, while the other sends blood all around the body. The walls of the hollow chambers are made of pure muscle, squeezing in a regular sequence. And the tough but flexible valves make sure the blood travels one way only. The heart's four valves all look different, but they do the same job. Each squeeze of the heart muscles pushes blood through one way. When the pressure's off, the valves snap shut to prevent the blood backing up. These hard-working valves broadcast the heart's exertions. As the two main valves snap shut in quick succession, they produce the sound of our double heartbeat. The stage is set for the one minute sprint of the blood around the body and back. The starting line is the left side of the heart, the stronger of the pair of pumps. Its top chamber fills with oxygen-rich blood from the lungs. The flexible pillars of this biological cathedral are made of muscle and tough fiber. They help to squeeze out the last drop of blood with every heartbeat. The pulsing walls push the blood out through the mitral valve. Its two flaps are supposed to resemble a bishop's hat, a mitre. The cords holding them in place are literally your heartstrings. The blood enters the lower chamber the left ventricle. Here, it's enclosed by the heart's most powerful muscle. When the ventricle is full of blood, the muscular walls suddenly squeeze hard. The valve to the top chamber on the right snaps shut. The blood, loaded with oxygen and energy, is forced out of the heart through the valve on the left with enough pressure to reach the furthest parts of the body. Beyond the valve lies the body's largest artery, the aorta. This is the beginning of the blood's incredible journey.
ahead lie the first of many arteries branching off. With each beat, blood follows the sharply curved aorta, first upwards and then down again. The heart draws no nourishment from the blood that fills it. Its muscles need a supply from outside, so the first lucky recipient of fresh blood is the heart itself. Small arteries branch off the aorta and turn back to the heart. Dividing into ever smaller vessels, these coronary arteries penetrate deep into the unresting muscles. These narrow vessels are all interconnected. It's a fail-safe mechanism. If there's a problem with blood supply down one route, there's a good chance it can get around another way. Waste products are swept into the system of blue coronary veins, which drain back into the right side of the heart. At the top of the bend, blood is faced with the choice of three major side passages. The openings to the right and left are the arteries to the arms. This is the route to the head. It contains a busy organ that's always hungry for fresh oxygen. Blood vessels must supply the brain with one and a half pints of blood every minute. About the contents of this bottle. <laughs>